Bum, 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 bum. Hello everyone. Today we are talking all things eyebrows. As you see, mine are missing right now. They are not done. The rest of my face is. I'm going to give you a run through of the two different ways that I style my brows. Um, to kind of give you some options as far as what will work best for you and in incorporating into your makeup routine and also some shaping tips and what I kind of do whenever I'm shaping them because my brows are not microbladed um, nor does somebody do them. I'm the one that tends to them. If you get them done or are microbladed, that's wonderful. I'm just giving you that information so that you know kind of the situation with my brows. Now I do have pretty good brows. I like to think that I do. I know a lot of women struggle with very sparse and thin brows so hopefully you can apply some of this and kind of a goal to shoot for with shape. So like I mentioned before I have two different ways that I like to do my brows and I'm going to do one on one brow and one on the other so they may not look exactly the same because the outcome is a little different but hey that's okay. They are sisters not twins. Remember that. You will always have a golden child eyebrow and one that does not want to cooperate. Before I jump into doing my brows, which I so desperately need to do, I want to add in something that I found on the Ulta 21 Days of Beauty just in case any of you have been shopping that sale. So I'm going to put that in right here. So I was scrolling through the Ulta website and there are 21 Days of Beauty and if you don't know, there are different deals each day in store, but they also have online only deals each day that change. And I noticed that on April 6th, which is my birthday, by the way, hey, hey, they have this Estee Lauder Double Wear Concealer for $14 and it's the online only deal. And I was so excited because I love this concealer. It is so so stinking good. I mean, thumbs up, thumbs way up. This is an awesome concealer. I'm loving it. So I was super excited. Wanted to share in case you've been curious about this concealer. It is super great and will be half off online only. So be sure to check out the deals that change every day online that are exclusive to being online only. There are some really good things still coming in the store and for the online deal. All right, I'm gonna scoot in a little bit closer and we will get to talking about our brows. All right, first things first, shaping them. And what I like to do whenever I pluck my brows and shape them, which is my preferred method, I use a tweezer, um, is I take my spoolie and I brush them up. And you can use a big brow brush, but I usually just reach for my spoolie that's on my brow is and when you brush all of the hairs up if you look up a little bit you will be able to see the line the bottom line of your brow and what you want to shoot for is for this to be kind of a steady line all the way across um, you don't want, um, I call it a tadpole eyebrow, where it's kind of a bubble here and then it gets really thin and tails off. You want it to be just a consistent, it may not be exactly perfect, but a line that goes across the bottom to kind of give you your marker and your stencil for your brow. As far as the thickness goes, that is different for everybody, but from about the end of your eye to your tear duct, it should be a very gradual, very slight increase in thickness. It should all remain just about the same thickness until you reach your arch, the corner of your brow, your corner of your eye, and then you will tail off into the thinness. That is what has worked for me, is keeping them whenever I tweeze them keeping them brushed up and just following a line making sure that when I'm tweezing I'm tweezing in a steady line and my thickness remains the same until about the my arch um, the end of my eye and then it tails off and becomes a little bit thinner there if you do something different with your brows by all means if you like that do that I'm just giving some suggestions of what I think work and what look really nice and are flattering to the face now when it comes to your eye and figuring out 
proportions and balance in the face and symmetry, what you wanna look for is your brow should start right here at your tear duct. It should kind of go up in a straight line and your arch should come right across your eyeball and your, the tail of your brow should be right here at the end of your eye. It should be a nice diagonal line right out to the tail of your brow. So inner corner comes here, diagonally from your nose, across the middle of your eye is your arch, and then at the tail of your eye, your outer corner should meet the tail of your brow. Now there are two different ways that I like to apply or fill in my brows, and I'm gonna start with the first one, and that is with a pencil. What I do is I fill it in completely with a pencil, and then I set it with a clear brow gel. So I'm gonna do that with this one right here, and this is my Troublemaker brow, by the way. What I like to do when I'm starting with my pencil, I like to start at the inner corner, and you need the lightest of pressure. You do not need intense pressure. Um, with your brow pencil. You want to always build up, regardless of what makeup product you're applying, it's always easier to build up a little by little than have to go in and remove what you did because you put on too much in the first place. So I like to start right here at the outer corner and I'm gonna follow that line that I talked about when it came to shaping them very lightly. And you see I'm kind of doing little dashes all the way across. And a spoolie will be your best friend no matter what kind of brows you are applying. Now you see I've got my line. Now I'm gonna start and make little tiny hair strokes to fill in any bald spots or sparse areas. This is definitely my area. For whatever reason, it will not grow. I don't know, it just, it won't grow. We're just gonna roll with it. And you fill it in very lightly still. I'm using the lightest of pressure. You see how far down I'm holding my spoolie and my, my brow pencil to keep that pressure really light. And you just, whatever you need filled in, you just wanna take your time and do tiny little strokes, tiny little hair strokes um, that are very light and soft and build it up where you want it with that general shape. And I don't have to pull my, bring my tail out very much. Some people may need to draw a little bit longer tail. You may need to feather more on the inner corner based on where your brows are at at that time. But having that line drawn there really helps if you are missing some in here from over plucking in the arch area. Having that line will help you kind of know where to fill in and give you a stencil. And once I've got them filled in where I like them, I take my spoolie and I brush it all through. And very rarely do I take concealer or anything and carve them out. I just, I, I, I like my brows how they are, you know, done this way. Now I will keep my beauty sponge on hand. That's a nice quick eraser if you feel like you got out of the lines a little bit. Or if you are learning and brows aren't something that you're used to doing, a tiny concealer brush with a little concealer is a wonderful way to kind of clean up any messes that you're making that is the same principle with your eyeliner. If you do your eyes first, then you take your makeup wipe and kind of sharpen that edge, it can be done the same way. If you do your brows before your foundation, you can use your makeup wipe, um, but if your foundation's already on and you wanna take that concealer brush, that's a great way to kind of clean up if you got outside of what you were shooting for. As I am blending it and running my spoolie through it, I will go back and kind of touch the areas that I feel are coming away too much and just make sure that it's all where I want it to be. And you definitely wanna take your time and blend out those stroke marks. You don't wanna leave that line there. You don't wanna leave any signs that you used your pencil. It should all look very seamless and soft when you're done. Your spoolie is your best friend. You definitely want to utilize this little tool. 
And when I get them where I think that I'm happy with them, I will one last time brush them all up and take a little look-see, and then I will grab my clear brow gel. And I miss the brow gel for the Ulta 21 Days of Beauty. Can I just say how upset I was? The benefit one, I didn't make it over to my local Ulta because my daughter had a school play that night, and so I thought, well, I will just order one, and they were sold out. <laughs> so, off of that soapbox, I'm taking my clear brow gel and I'm just going to run it through my brows and set them where I like to. And the purpose of a brow gel is to lock them in place, yes. If you have crazy, unruly brows that kind of want to go every which way, which mine do tend to do, this is a wonderful thing. It will keep them in place, but I also like the feathery effect that it gives them. I find that it just makes them look a little fluffier and dare I say natural, um, but I just like the little bit of thickness and fluffiness that a brow gel adds. I think that it really makes a difference and it will keep them in place. Now brow one is done and I will show you the other way that I like to do my brows. And this one is my good brow. This is my Cinderella to my stepsister over here. First things first, I will brush them up. And instead of grabbing my pencil first, I am going to grab my tinted brow gel. Anytime you're using a tinted brow gel, regardless of the brand, I always recommend wiping it off, just like you do a lot of times with your mascara. If it gets too clumpy, you don't want an excess of product on this because if you go into your brow, and I'm gonna be cute. I'm gonna start by putting it right in the middle, kind of around my arch. I don't want to place my initial saturated brush right at the tip in the front of my brow. It becomes a little too intense, but I will start on the arch and work it back. And once I've got some product kind of gone through my brows and dispersing, I will start working it into the front. And you want to use upward strokes and brush the hairs in the direction that you want the brow to lay because you're filling in with these fibers and this colored gel. Now that I have my tinted gel applied, I reach for my pencil and I will fill in any sparse areas and really kind of more just make that distinct line across the bottom and fluff it out while it's still a little tacky. Um, but we're not having to go in and draw in and stencil in like we did initially. We're just kind of taking this as a touch up. And if you have gorgeous, full, perfect brows, you may not need this step. A tinted brow gel may be all that you need. And a lot of the time, if I'm at the beach or really in a hurry, I will just do this. But generally, I do both of these steps just to keep them looking a little more structured. So I will take my pencil and now this gel is a little tacky still and that's what you want and I will start from the inner corner of my brow and very very lightly draw that line across the bottom feather in a couple up here I always like to touch the top just a tiny bit and out to my tail and then take my spoolie and start fluffing all that through. And it's gonna move the gel a little bit, but it won't come off on the rest of your face. It will just kind of keep fluffing them so when they set and it dries, they will set in that beautiful fluffy shape. So fluffy! <laughs> So yeah, there we are. I hope that this was helpful and kind of made brows a little less intimidating if you've struggled with them or maybe just kind of gave you some different ideas as far as shaping or application. Um, maybe one was more attractive to you than the other and seemed a little more user-friendly as far as what kind of products you like to use or are comfortable using. I hope that you all have a wonderful week. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see all of you in the next video.